The thing about dancing is you should start on something very, very simple, like something very obvious, because if you try and start with something like earth energy, it's such a complex uh, thing that you, you, you begin to lose heart. I want you to walk towards this rope and with your eyes open, knowing that it's there, rods akimbo, <laughs> and I want you to walk towards it very, very slowly and say, show me the rope. There you go. One, two, three, four. What you do here is concentrate 100% on the rope. Nothing else exists. And all you do is walk towards this thing and say, show me the rope, show me the rope, show me the rope, show me the rope. And the rods will cross right above the rope. Now, when you do it the first time, the, the rods might work maybe like that, maybe like that, maybe like that. It doesn't matter how they work to, uh, to start with. If you're getting a reaction, it's the start of dowsing. Very, very important. Now try it again. One, two. Wow, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. There so it goes, there way. it goes. That's, that's fine. Doesn't matter, cause that's going, I'm that's fine. going. Your, left, your right one's starting to go. That's it, yes. that's it, that's yeah, it. That's, that that's, it. that's right, yes, yes. 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 This seems a very simple, almost stupid exercise, but it's very useful actually to enable you to practice using one rod to follow the contour of, of, of something on the ground or a pipe under the ground or a drain under the ground. Now, if you're right-handed, you walk on the left-hand side of wherever you've found, this, on this occasion the rope, and you pick up with the rod right over the rope and you hold the rod horizontally, quite firmly. Don't let it tilt to the left or right feel the delicate movements of the rod and actually follow them because it will take you along the contours and you just follow where it goes. And this tells you exactly where the rope or the pipe is underground. <laughs> Concentrate on the rope. <laughs> rope, 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 rope. And of course you can do this uh, in exactly the same way with a, with a pendulum and if the, if the wind doesn't blow it about too much you can just find whatever it is and then ask for the direction and, and very very carefully walk along in the direction that the pendulum points. And this is quite a delicate operation because you have to follow every time it very subtly moves around and you eventually trace the whole contour. You can save yourself a great deal of money by, by not having to dig in the wrong places. But having found where it is, you've got to find out how, how deep you have to go to find the pipe. And there are two ways of doing that, which I'll show you. First one is Bishop's Rule, named after one of, the, one of the clergy who invented the system. What you have to do is find whatever it is first, the pipe in this case, register where it is, bring your feet up to the position, and then you use your rod or your pendulum and you walk away from it the distance of the depth of whatever it is and you ask it to show you where how deep the pipe is and you measure it from there to there that gives you the depth you have to dig to find that pipe there's another way of doing it and that is by bracketing so you can actually stand on the pipe again and say is it more than 10 feet deep and that's my this is your use of your yes and no my, my mine says no it's not more than is it between five and ten feet deep? Yes. Is it between seven foot six and ten feet? No. So it's between five foot and seven foot six. Is it more than seven feet? Yes. Is it seven foot one? Is it seven foot two? Is it seven foot three? And that's the depth you've got to dig to get down to where the pipe is to get the leak. In a commercial sense, I started in the early 80s. I've had my own drilling company. We were very successful, um, but due to ill health, 
decided that um, perhaps the heavy work wasn't what I wanted to do, so now I just go to actually um, doing the divining side of it, which I can do, and get somebody else in that does all the heavy work. <laughs> so when I come in and I'm talking to the customer, I'm always divining up to a point. Uh, or I'm talking, I'm always looking around, I look across, I say, ah, yeah, that's where I want to go. And if I keep looking back, my expression to it is, you can't take your eyes off it. And the case being, I look around the whole site, I still want to go there. No matter what I do, I want to go there. That's my first pull. And then when I start looking again, well, you could go back over here, but that's where it still tells me. And that's my first port of call. If that's, that's convenient that's and suitable, and then we come and drill a hole. I say, see it. People say, what do you see? The only way I can put it in that sense is, technically, we have five senses. But to describe it to somebody, I would say to a sighted person, put it this way, um, describe the colour green to a blind man. I can't, you can't do that. I can't tell you what I see. I just know I feel I want to be up at that particular point and it takes me there. Now, one, one of the really delightful things about dowsing is, and it's probably the only method you can do it, but you can actually uh, measure human auras and chakras because they are just, just, they are simply biomagnetic fields which surround our bodies. Very, very subtle energies which are profoundly affected by the uh, nuances of earth energies around us and it affects our behaviour quite profoundly. When we started working first, I used to do it by, by hand and I used to be able to find uh, the aura and you can do that. But when I started dowsing, I found that the aura was much further out. And you could follow it exactly as you follow the rope. You could follow the outside of somebody's aura just by following what the, the rod does. And it should be centrally balanced around the spine. I do a lot of experiments with this when we're doing teaching and get people to douse each other's aura and they find it absolutely fascinating how the, how the aura varies and the size of the chakras and the biomagnetic fields change. Every living being has an aura and particularly with trees, you can work with trees and they actually react to our consciousness. So in the classes, what I like to do is ask the pupils, if you like, to select a tree that attracts them and just go up to it and acknowledge it. And then douse its aura, because every tree has an aura and, and they, they are all different sizes. And I ask them to douse it first, before they, they start working with the tree at all, just douse where the aura is. And mark the outside edge of it. And that indicates where the outside edge is, just about there. So if I mark that with a stick, and then I ask them to go and, and hug the tree, but, uh, consciously say to it, you are beautiful. And let the tree know that you, you, you think it's absolutely gorgeous and it's a wonderful piece of, of, of natural being that you have a great rapport with and you can hug it and you can love it and really communicate with it. Now the tree responds to the sincerity of your communication. It knows whether you're paying lip service in this hug or not. So you go out and you douse it again and see if its aura has changed. And yes, it has. The outside edge of this aura is now coming out here. It was there. So you can see that's almost a third bigger. So the tree has responded to a conscious acknowledgement of it, a, a, a declaration that you think it's beautiful. <laughs>